Hello everybody, welcome back to Painting Fundamentals. I'm Joe Carswell and up to this point, we have been through a lot of the painting process, a lot of tools and materials, every step from floor protection to uh, spackling, filling defects, to caulking seams, to priming, to even taping certain areas so that we can protect them from paint. We've been through everything, now it's time to put a coat on this demo wall. And I apologize uh, from the beginning, this wall is in a crazy state. We've been through a lot of different methods and procedures with this wall, and it's somewhere in between being finished and not. Our goal now is to get this wall finished, to get a coat of paint on this drywall. That's gonna require a couple of different tools to do that. It's going to be a brush, and we'll need a roller to complete this. These two tools together will work to get that coat of paint on the wall. We're going to start with a brush. We need to cut in all of the edges. That's the tool that's going to provide us a clean, tight paint line up against any edge that we need. The roller's going to come in to paint the field. All of our large open areas are going to get done with this tool. Let me start with the brushes. We'll talk about how to use those to do that cut-in process. Let's talk about brushes. This is the original painter's hand tool. It requires a lot of skill and experience to use it well. Let's start with a squared end brush. So if I'm talking about my squared end brush, the bristles are cut on the head in a way that is square to the ferrule. This brush is going to be good to use in the field or painting large areas. And it needs to be held in a way that's specific. The grip of the brush will help you to control it, to work it on the surface. And it has a handle, but you're not going to hold it by the handle. The handle should sit in this space on your hand right there, and that's going to help with the balance of the brush and also with leverage, so you can put some pressure on this side. It's going to help control it. If you've ever used a brush without a handle, a short brush, it's very awkward to use. You don't want to do it for very long. So you're holding the brush around the ferrule, and your fingers can spread out around that ferrule. My, my index finger is going to be on the end here, and now this is a good uh, grip on this brush that we can start to work with it. If I'm using this brush, it might be underhanded or overhanded. I'm not going to spin the brush in my hand. I can leave it in this position and move the brush in different ways. Let's put it on a surface and see how this works. So if I'm painting a large area, I'm always using the width of the brush to my advantage. With paint on this brush, I have the entire width of this brush to help spread that paint. As I get close to this edge where I have a trim and the wall meet, this becomes a little more difficult and I can always turn the brush to the side. This is going to concentrate all of these bristle ends in a place where I can now work the brush in this way. So I have two methods. I can use it in this direction for the large areas. And when I get really close, I can cut, we'll call this cutting a line. I can cut a line up against any edge using it this direction. And with a squared end brush, we can drag it either direction. It is going to work this way or this way. So that's our square edge brush. This is not the best tool to use up against edges though. I have a better one and that is my angled brush. So let's compare these two really quick. So here's my squared brush. This is my angled brush. And if you look at the way the brush uh, ends or the bristle ends are cut, I have a long point and a short point on my angled brush. That doesn't exist on this brush. So what that means is that my angled brush now gives us some advantage with this point. We're going to call this point on this brush the toe, and we're going to call the backside the heel. So I'm going to grip this brush in a specific way. So we talked about gripping it on the ferrule, and the handle sits in this crook of my hand here. And my index finger is always going to be on the point of the brush. The heel will be back here, the point is here. We will always hold the brush this way, and my fingers are spread out and making contact with the ferrule. So this is our grip on our angled brush, very similar to the other brush, but now we have a specific direction or orientation with our angled brush. When I use this on a surface, 
what's going to happen is that now I can paint in the field using the width of this brush just like I did with the squared end brush and I can do all of my area work that way but when I get to an edge now I'm going to work up against that edge and all of my bristles are going to come in contact with that edge as close as I can. I've got a lot of that whole side of the brush, all of those brush ends are working to make that clean line, but I'm always dragging the toe of my brush along. So the heel of the brush is always leading and the toe is always going to be following. That's, that means that if we want to paint this direction, then we have to do it underhanded and we're pulling that toe behind. So that's going to allow us control. Why do we care so much about the toe of this brush? This angle is going to allow us that, uh, that it's going to push the brush away from the edge. That's going to give us much more uh, access and control up against any edge. Now that we've talked about the grip of the brush and how to orient it as far as an edge or the field, we need to talk about how to move the brush on the surface. What is the stroke of the brush that we need to get a good finish? And that is going to be long passes. You don't want to be doing this. This is scrubbing the brush along, not like a broom. We, we don't want this. We want nice, long, continuous passes. We want to be able to uh, overlap each pass as we go. And the important thing is at the beginning of the stroke and at the end of the stroke. We need to feather this stroke and feathering means when we get to the beginning into the stroke and at the end, we are lifting that brush. So I'm coming in nice and soft and I'm leaving nice and soft. What this is doing is blending or feathering to a very thin line, any paint on this edge. It helps with hiding brush strokes and also spreading and smoothing the paint out. So practicing this long path with the lift at the end and the very soft beginning is the basics of how to use a brush. This will translate into any process that you're doing with the brush, whether it is working a large surface, cutting in a fine edge, or even painting trim of a specific size. Now that we've talked about how to hold the brush, how to orient it, and how to move the brush on the surface, we need to go through the four steps of transferring the paint from the paint cup onto the wall. The four steps go like this, and we've been through loading the brush. That's dipping it in the paint cup, loading this brush head with as much paint as possible. The next step, step two, is going to be unloading that paint on the wall. I'm, trying, I'm just trying to get that paint on this surface in a place. Then we're going to get to step three, which is taking that paint that is heavy on that surface and spreading it out to an even coat. That's going to carry it further. Uh, it's going to expand the area that it was on in step two, which was unloading that paint on the surface. Step four is smoothing that paint out. It's going to be adding a fine touch and fine passes of the brush to get it to a finished look with no defects. We will be repeating those four steps over and over again every time we load the brush and then unload it on the surface. And once we get to that uh, repeated process, we need to talk about a wet edge. A wet edge is a simple concept that is basically every time we are laying a fresh edge, we need to blend our next pass into it. We never start unloading our paint directly into our wet edge. We're going to feather or thin our paint into that edge. So basically we are just expanding our field as we paint, always keeping in mind working that wet edge. The danger of overbrushing or overworking any surface with any paint tool is that if you're painting fresh paint into an area that has already started to dry, you're going to run into a lot of problems. That paint is getting gummy, it's getting sticky, and it's not going to flatten or level out very well. So our best finish is going to come from always working a fresh wet edge once we lay out that paint or smooth it all out, we need to leave it. Once we commit to it, we have to work away from it and then continue with the fresh paint edge. If you see back here, this dark paint, we did this process of loading, unloading, spreading, and smoothing the paint. Let's take a look at that and see how it happens.
we've loaded our brush it's time to get to the next step which is unloading this brush on the surface i've got a four inch wall brush here it's a large brush i think it'll help for demonstration also i have an interior wall here you would probably never be painting interior drywall with a brush you would be rolling this surface but it's a great open space for us to work this brush if you have a large area to work this would be the brush to do it it's a wall brush i'm going to come in here and i'm going to unload this paint onto this surface i already have a wet edge here what i don't want to do is to start all of my unloading of my paint right on my wet edge i want to come off of that edge a little bit and i'm going to unload my paint in this area right here now my a lot of my paint is off of my brush now we need to go to the next step which is spreading this paint out we need a nice even coat of paint so i'm moving all of that paint out to the distance that i need it to be i've got a nice uh, even coat now of that paint and i can start again with loading my brush and then unloading it on the wall any extra i have i can fill in my gaps but keep in mind you don't want to come in with all of your paint unloading it right into your wet edge so as soon as i get an area that i feel like is where the paint is spread out evenly i want to lay that paint out and that's going to be my finished strokes so i'll go one more spot over here i'm going to unload my paint there then spread it out into my wet edge and the other thing to talk about is your stroke and how at the beginning and at the end of the stroke i want to feather it so i'm lifting it at the end and i'm coming in real gently at the beginning at this point i have a large area and i can finish all of these strokes out what you want is a nice steady and light pass of the brush you're trying to even out these are your finished strokes and once we get done with these finished strokes we're going to stay off of that paint so you're watching it from the side here i'm using my raking light to evaluate what i'm doing and i want to make sure i don't have any drips any high spots or any strange patterns at this point i'm considering this area done i'm going to leave it alone the paint should flatten out kind of uh, fill out a little bit and it should even out now i can move on to another area keeping in mind all of this wet edge and i'll continue this process until i get done with all of my surface keep in mind there's a lot of logic and strategy to this you never want to go back in and work an area that has already started to dry at the end of that clip this is where we are and if we imagine this paint was still wet it's dry right now we would have to continue this process of working that wet edge and coating this surface i would have to deal with these edges all around here especially there and there i have to commit to those get them done quickly and move on i would be carrying my paint uh, from right to left and i need a strategy that is going to complete this whole process in a way if you've ever heard the term paint yourself into a corner that's a good strategy when you're a painter you're working everything uh, in a direction and that wet edge is always being considered and you're not going back and reworking areas that are already dry there's one thing to avoid with a brush and that's dragging it over any hard edge in this case we're trying to avoid this edge not a problem but anywhere like here around this outlet i've got a hard or a sharp edge the worst thing you can do is take a paintbrush especially when it's loaded with paint and drag it over in any direction over that edge what that will do if you've noticed with your paint cup is pull a lot of that paint off and it's going to deposit it inside here what's going to happen then is that paint's going to start to drip and it might drip slow enough that you don't notice it later you'll come back and you'll have a run straight down from this corner just because you drug that brush over that edge so whenever you're painting close to these edges you should think about them like any other edge that you're trying to protect and don't drag those bristles over that this concept of dragging a brush over a hard edge is the same situation if you have an outside corner so if this was an outside corner and i was to pull that brush over that corner i'm actually depositing a lot of paint on the back side of that corner and if i'm not paying attention to it 
it's number one building into heavy spots, but it's also dripping on that side. So if we're ever working towards an outside corner, you would paint towards it. You could paint up to it in this fashion, and you could always paint over towards it, but you'd never pull this way, dragging over that hard edge. It might be in the painting process that you need to paint something smaller than a large wall surface. In this case, I have tons of room. I can work with my three inch brush. I don't always have that opportunity when I'm doing a piece of trim. And the change here, the brush is gonna work the same. The process is similar, but the brush is going to change. So I would use a smaller brush on that piece of trim. And the difference here is going to be the width of the brush. So we can change the width of the brush and use it in different places. So this brush now could be used on this piece of trim, it fits fairly well. I can actually turn it or angle it a little bit if I need less width, and I can turn it this way for more width out of the brush. This brush will also work on the edges of the trim, just like we're cutting in here on the wall, we can use it to cut in here on the trim. So same grip on the brush, we're either using it overhand or underhand, we're dragging the toe of the brush and we're leading with the heel of the brush and if we need to concentrate those bristles, we can use it in this direction. If we're trying to cover a lot of area, we can use it in that direction. So you can see it's a similar process. We're just needing to work with a lot more skill because we have a very contained uh, specific area that we're trying to work in. One other thing to talk about, especially with trim, is that brush strokes are inevitable when you're painting. And brush strokes are going to be small, thin lines that show up when the bristle ends drag through the paint. You can't eliminate them, but you can make them as minimal as possible. So you would never be painting trim in this direction. You would always paint the trim so that the brush strokes are going to carry for the long length of that trim. And especially in your final finish strokes, step four of our application process, you wanna make sure that all of those brush strokes are number one, look continuous, you don't have starts and stops, and you don't have a, uh, a brush stroke that carries the wrong direction uh, according to the length of the trim. Think about your brush strokes as similar to what the wood grain would be. So if you can imagine wood grain in your mind, it would run the same direction as the, the brush strokes. Let's go through our four steps of the painting process when we're working with trim. So we're going to be loading the brush in the paint cup. We're going to unload a majority of that paint on the broad surface of the trim using the, the most width of the brush. Now that we've unloaded a, most of that paint on this trim, we can then use the brush to do a lot of the detail work. And that detail work is going to be Step three, which is spreading the paint out. We wanna make sure that we get a good, solid, even coat of paint on that surface. We're only working a section at a time and we wanna complete that section as we go. Once we have spread that paint over, say, a couple of sections, we can then finish out those strokes. Those finished strokes need to be the smoothing process, which is going to be long, feathered passes that are all in the same direction and they need to be light so that we can finish that paint out as smooth as possible. Once we get that done, we need to move on. That paint needs to set and we don't need to overwork it. So now we've been through the purpose of a brush. There's a couple of places where this tool really shines. Whenever you have detail work to do like shutters, doors, any place uh, in tight spaces, this is a great job for a brush. When we get into rollers, you're going to see a lot of work happen quickly. It's a very good production tool, but the detail work happens with the brushes. So speaking of rollers, I wanna mention, you saw a video of me coating this wall with a large four inch wall brush. That's a really old school way to paint. We don't do that anymore. It was just to demonstrate how that brush works in a large area. I have a better tool to do that, and that is going to be our next video, and the next step in our process is going to be a roller. This is a great tool for rolling and coating large areas. This is my nine inch open end roller. This is an 18 inch roller. 
Either one would work for this wall. We're going to start with this one and you probably will too. And what's going to happen is that all of my perimeter edges would already be cut in with our brush. The cut in process would leave me a good four to six inches of paint that now I can roll up to. So we'll get into all those details in the next video. I appreciate you sticking with me. I'll see you in the next one. This video was made possible through the financial support from Benjamin Moore. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com.